Good morning, you sexy buggers. Hope you're all having a good day. Another pretty sunny day in old England. First things first, I'm actually off to the post office to post the patrons decals, which are all down here. Got quite quite a lot of them. I noticed a few of you guys were actually messaging me on Instagram and Facebook asking where we could, where you guys could get the decals. And they're all available on my Patreon. If you pledge $10, I send you two cheeky monkeys. They're actually quite big, really high quality. And if you pledge $20, I send you two monkeys and two chrome gold ones, the ones you see on my S15. What you can do if you just want to get the decals is you can sign up for $10 or $20 depending on what stickers you want. And then once you get your stickers, you can just basically downgrade your pledge. Or you can cancel if you don't want to pledge anymore. Um, but you can just downgrade your pledge to $2 or $1 just to sort of show a little support towards the channel. Anyway, I'm going to go and post all these decals now so I'll catch up with you guys in about five minutes. <laughs> Today's gonna to be pretty exciting. I'm off. No. Today's gonna to be pretty exciting. I'm off to the farm this morning to see old Scousey. We're probably gonna do a little bit of work to the new Sora that I bought yesterday. She needs a battery and a few other bits, but we'll chuck her on the ramp when we get up there and have a sort of good look underneath and, and see what she's all about. I've got some really, really, really exciting news for you guys. I know a lot of you have been really missing JZX's on the channel and some of you were, were a little bit sad when I got rid of my JZX90. <laughs> The good news is I've now got a pretty, pretty savage JZX100 Mark II inbound from Japan from Power Vehicles. The car is pretty, pretty mental spec. It's about six to 650 horsepower. It's running a 2JZ bottom end and a 1J head, so pretty similar to my old JZX90 Chaser. A lot of you guys would have heard of Power Vehicles before. They're actually quite a famous company in Japan. <laughs> Andy Gray being the chap that took the JZX100 to Formula Drift in America. His workshop is actually at Abisu. He's actually based at the Abisu track. So ideal for sort of prepping the cars and learning about the cars. All the drift cars he sells, he actually does like a little drifting video on one of the little circuits at Abisu. Um, this is the one of my JZX100.
as you can see that car is pretty goddamn savage i'll run through the full spec of it properly i'm going to make it i'm going to make a dedicated episode or dedicated series for importing this car i would highly recommend using someone like andy there are lots of exporters and importers all around the world that can get japanese cars but andy has an amazing reputation i've actually used him in the past about five or six years ago i imported a type r a subaru two door and i imported a couple of starlet gt turbos through him as well ages ago so i've used him before and he's very very good the car's currently buried in snow at a beast they've had a really really bad sort of spate of snow over the last sort of couple of weeks so once the car's been de-snowed as it were um, and he's got to do a couple of bits for me like chucking the electric windows back in or chucking the electric window switches back in and getting the headlights working um, just so i can basically make the car road legal once he's done that hopefully in about two weeks time the car will be put on a boat and shipped over to sunny old england what i will do is i'll get the car road legal we'll take it to loads of shows a lot of you guys have been asking me to come to some shows this year the last couple of years you know i've really been concentrating on drifting if we can get a few more patrons on board i can probably do you know a lot more skid days this year um, but if not i'm quite happy just to start going to some car shows and car events a lot of you guys have been messaging me asking me to come to car shows so you can sort of meet me um so yeah this year i'm definitely going to try and get out there a bit more i do kind of miss the car scene a bit i used to love going to all the cruises when i was a bit younger and i do sort of miss that whole sort of social side of the, of the car world so i'm definitely going to try and get into it a bit more mr mersey back from japan yo yo lucky bugger scousey <laughs> oh, let's go have a quick look at the old girl here she is absolute beast I've just noticed as well, it's got IS, I think these are IS 300 wheels. It's also got near enough brand new Toro proxies all around it as well. So really nice tyres. It's got a little bit, this is a little bit of damage on the wing and the front bumper. It's not horrendous, we can get that repaired. I'm sure I'll make it 10 times worse. Overall though, the car's really, really nice. Looks a lot straighter than my old one, that's for sure. There's a little bit of, little bit of paint fade on the back, but nothing horrendous. Quick look inside. The interior is quite dirty. We need to get a, we need to do a good sort of wet vacuum in here just to clean it up a little bit. But literally for 250 quid, it is absolutely sick. Quick look under the engine bay, and there we have it. One one UZ V8 original Toyota motor. In the States, these were called an SC400. They also did an SC300, which was a three liter naturally aspirated 2JZ. This is a, a four liter naturally aspirated V8. Jamie was telling me as well that these early 1UZs have much stronger connecting rods than the later ones. You can actually boost them. I'm not sure if we're gonna go to town with sort of getting massive performance out of this car. The kind of idea is to get it as a nice daily, uh, a bit of a street weapon for John, and a bit of a sort of practice car for me at drift days. I'm just letting the car warm up and getting the heaters on inside just to sort of dry the interior out a little bit. In the workshop, we've got a JZX100 in that Sean is selling. Uh, Mr. Scouse will tell you what he's doing. Uh, so just got to lower the coilovers. Basically from when it come over from Japan, they always raise the coilovers to get it onto the, the ship. Boat, yeah. Um, so yeah, now it's over here. It's had its MOT and everything. So yeah, we're going to put the coilovers back down to the height it was do the wheel alignment on it, and then it's good to go for the customer to collect once the registration's complete. Cool. I did notice a few of you guys were getting a little bit confused with the old J's and X's and all the different numbers. It's quite easy to explain. The best way I can, I can sort of explain it is by using the BMW 3 Series as an example. They did loads of J's and X's throughout the last sort of 30, 40 years. Predominantly, we're mostly interested with the 81s, 90s, 100s, and 110s. J's and X 81 is the earliest one. J's X 90 came afterwards, then a J's and X 100, then a J's and X 110. With each J's and X, they do effectively like a different trim level. They do a Chaser, a Cresta, and a Mark II. With the 110, they actually only made a Mark II. They didn't make a Cresta or a Chaser, but that's a story for another day. The easiest way to explain it is by using BMWs. So, so let's take a 3 Series, for example. As a, it's, not, it's not a comparable car, but let's just use 3 Series as an example. Uh, a JZX90 is like an E36. A JZX100 is like an E46. And a JZX110 is like an E90. With the 3 Series, you could either get an SE, which was the base model. You can get a Sport, or you can get an M Sport. It's exactly the same thing with the JZX's. Cresta, Chaser, and Mark II were just different trim levels for each JZX. If you see a JZX like that, it's not automatically a Chaser. That happens to be a JZX100 Chaser, but you can also get a Cresta and a Mark II. Hopefully that clarifies the JZX's for you guys a little bit. Um, Scouts has got to do a little bit of paperwork. I'm gonna crack on with a bit of editing for an hour and we will catch up with you guys very shortly. Monkey is a very lucky boy this morning because as we know, Mio Mucker went to Japan. You've been to Japan a lot of times though, haven't you? Yeah, we've got there quite frequently. Very kindly, absolute legend. He made me very happy this morning. I'm slightly emotional, I'll be, I'll be honest, Miz. He has bought me from Japan a original Vertex uh, towing hook. What should I put this on? Sora? It's too good for this. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I love Vertex. 
Very yummy. Fucking hell, I better not crash, man. I don't want to get it dirty. <laughs> <laughs> no, massive thanks. Um, Muz, Muzzy also bought me this. This is from Rain what they call Reinhard, and they're like an exhaust manufacturer in Japan. Yep. And apparently, if you apply heat on this, it's titanium, and you get all the mad colours. Yeah. Should, should, should we have? Should we do it? Yeah, we'll get heat done. Yeah, should we try it? Pretty goddamn cool that. That is definitely the best uh, best key tag I've ever seen. Well, apart from mine, of course. But <laughs> I've now finished all of my editing, and Scouse is now finishing the workshop. We're not going to do a huge amount of stuff to the storage today. It's pretty much a case of getting it on the ramp, uh, checking underneath. We're going to change the oil and filter as well. scousey has been working on Lozzy's uh, pulsar most of the day. Just tell the audience what you've been doing to us, Scouse. Um, so we've just had new brake pads all round because um, it had the EBC yellow stuff pads in there, yeah. which he wasn't really liking, so they just sort of take a bit too much temperature to heat up. Like he has a, it's, they have more of a, a fast road track pad, yeah. um, so we changed those for some like normal OEM kind of pads, um, just so you know they've got they better braking, they don't have they to heat up. A bit quicker. That's it, yeah, so you can kind of get good braking straight away. Um, that was the first thing, and then we did an oil and filter change. Whilst doing that, we noticed that the sump was slightly dented in, I don't think it's had an impact as such. I think someone may have accidentally jacked up jacked on it at some it, yeah. point. Um, so basically I took the sump off, uh, cleaned it all out, knocked that back out so it's straight, resealed it, put it yeah. back on. And that's just to make sure you don't have like, any oil retention problems, just to make sure you've got enough oil around the pickup. That's it, yeah, because I wasn't quite sure where the pickup was going to be on that. And if it's next to the dent, then yeah, you're not going to have you know much um, space. I've actually had an SR20 before where the sump had actually knocked up and there was an imprint of the oil pickup Shit. on the sump on where it's sitting so like close so yeah. the fact that engine wasn't fucked was just an unbelievable Miracle, yeah. um, so yeah it's just one of those things it only takes an hour to do and it's well worth doing cool. we're just going to take the pulsar out of the workshop and bring the saw in The saw has actually run out of fuel, which is kind of a good thing because the fuel was three years old. We want to try and get rid of it. The bad thing is we've now got to push the fucking thing in. Luckily, we had enough fuel to just about drive the car in. You can see she's just about to run out. Apart from a set of Magna Core leads and some Lexus IS wheels, this car is literally completely standard. So standard suspension, standard open diff. It's actually quite rare to find a saw like this completely stock. Considering it's been sitting around for three years, it is in really good Good condition, yeah. And usually they're covered in spiders and cobwebs. Oh, oh she's yeah, going. She's about to run out of fuel, which is not a bad thing. There she goes. Yeah. It's actually really clean, isn't it? Jesus. I know a few of you guys said, please don't kill this car like the old one. We didn't actually kill the old one. Well, yes, I did effectively destroy the old car, but then we went and bought a shell that was destined for the scrapyard and turned it into a new car. So we killed one saw, but we created another one. Exactly the same thing with this. If this does get a little bit scruffy in a few years time, I could always go and buy another shell and turn it into a new car. So we're not actually getting rid of any sawers. We're actually giving them new leases of life. These cars are effectively old relics. And if us guys in the drift world didn't use them, a lot of them would get scrapped and get sort of left to, left to rot. Scousey ordered the oil filter earlier. I've got the brand new oil here, all from OP Oils. The same stuff that we always use. Titan uh, Race Pro S from Fuchs, and it's a 10W50. As most of you know, I get all of my oil from OP Oils. They really, really are one of the, well, in my opinion, one of the best suppliers in the UK. And I'm constantly running a 10% discount code with them. So check out the OP Oils website down here, use the code and save yourself a few bucks. Here comes the last bit of the oil. We've had the car running for about three hours, so fingers crossed it's, uh, fingers crossed it's hot enough. The first mods we'll do to the car to make it skid better are a set of coilovers. Obviously it's now on stock suspension. It's super soft, makes it really hard to skid. And we're also gonna weld the diff up as well. At the moment, it's only got an open diff, which means you can only really do sort of one wheel, one wheel duggets when it's wet. Uh, anything in the dry only really wants to spin up one wheel. I'll probably try and source a set of secondhand coilovers on eBay. If anyone out there knows of anyone with a cheap set of Sora coilovers, uh, feel free to give me a shout via Facebook. Scouts is just removing the under tray so we can gain access to the uh, oil filter. Right, there comes the under tray. 
That's the oil filter up there. The one they've sent us seems to be a lot bigger than this. We're just going to check it. We might have actually received the wrong oil filter. We'll double check now. Definitely. Yeah, it's definitely too big. Fuck me. What's that off a fucking truck? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That probably is, yeah, off your fucking van. Yeah, so if you guys look up there, it's massively, massively different in size. So we'll have to just take the oil filter out, drain it overnight, and then order a new one in the morning. That's pretty much all we can do today. We can't actually put the new oil in until we've got the replacement oil filter, but that'll be here tomorrow morning. So we will crack on uh, first thing. Before we go, the chaser has now been fully lowered. Just give you guys a quick walk around so you can see how much more sexual it now looks with a little bit of low. It's not stupidly low. There we go, looking much, much better on. Quick look at the back. Obviously the suspension hasn't quite settled at the front yet, but it will do in due course. Must admit, I do like the chasers. They've got a really, really nice front end. Anyway, I'm gonna crack on with a little bit of editing now and finish today's video. We will catch up with you guys tomorrow morning where we'll be cracking on with the, the new practice car. As always, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure to check out my Patreon out down here. Give the video a like, put any comments down below, I'll do my best to get back to you, and we will all see you soon.